Hey guys, so if you haven't already seen, I made two AI videos, but I realized that there's some spots in there that people were getting confused on, and I just spots that I just cut out on accident. So in today's video, I'm going to be making the same AI, but hopefully I can make it a bit more simpler. But keep in mind, this is a rec room AI. It is not supposed to be simple. It's not going to be simple. So just try your best to follow along and do exactly what I do. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and let's get started. I guess the same thing in both of my AI videos. You're going to want to have your map and just clone it down. So for me, I just cloned it down like about right there. You guys are going to want to clone it down a lot further because players up here are going to hear the goblin down here. But I'm just going to do it right here for the video. Now, the next thing you want to do is go up here to your settings. Scroll all the way down until you see this AI right here and click bake nav mesh. Once you bake the nav mesh, it should just show up like right here. So it should have this white box around it. If you go in your makeup and click the manipulate tool and click it, then you should just be able to manipulate it. I usually manipulate it on the bottom map right here. Once you have the box around your bottom map, then go back to the settings and rebake the nav mesh. So now once you rebake it, you should see this purple stuff on your bottom map. Also, by the way, you're gonna wanna clone your walls down with your bottom map too. I just didn't make walls for this. But it's fine, it's just the AI could fall really easily. Also, I forgot one thing, you're gonna have to go to back to settings and scroll it down until you see allow creative tools beta content and turn that on. Once you have it on, search up spawner component, should be right here. Now click it and place it anywhere on your map where you want your AI to spawn. Now go to your configure tool and configure the spawner component, set the object, and make it either a melee goblin or a mouse bot. I'm just going to do a melee goblin. If you want a straighter pathway, use a mouse bot. Once you have your bot right here, you're going to want to reconfigure it. And scroll on right here where it says behavior on spawn. Change this to disengage. Then just right here, switch this switch off. Now scroll a little bit more down until you see the tags right here. I'm just going to delete the first tag and give this tag of G. Doesn't really matter what tag, but you just want to remember the tag. Now configure your spawner component and go up and right here where it says follow, detach it. Then just move the spawner component chip up to where you're gonna do your circuits. So get a set transform then get a spawn in an event receiver and configure this event receiver. Scroll all the way down and configure it to be an update 30 Hertz. Now just move this to the side. Then get an if is valid. Then get a record object at first with tag and a from record object. Now put the tag in the record object at first of tag. So this is the tag of your goblin. So I put tag of G. Right now it says invalid record object because the AI isn't spawned in. That's fine. So connect this up to the from record object. Then you connect this up to the is valid right here on the value. Then you can connect this up to the hertz to the if is valid. Also, before we do anything else, come back up here to your map and just spawn in a trigger volume. This trigger volume is going to be your AI. Then if you want to connect anything to it, like your monster, you want to get a clamp, then go to your connect tool and drag the trigger volume onto the black part of the clamp. And then whatever else you want to connect to it, connect up to this part right here. If you've already animated your monster and you try to connect it to the clamp, it's not going to work. Like your animation is going to like be broken. So I'd recommend animating your monster after it's connected to the clamp. So connect your monster up to the clamp first, then animate it. But if you've already animated it without connecting to the clamp, you can just connect your animation controller to the clamp right here. Then in order for it to actually move, you have to click play in order for it to follow the trigger volume right here. So I just put a cube on here and connect it to the clamp. Now once you have your monster, configure your trigger volume chip and detach it. And I move this chip all the way down to where you're circuits are going to be now connect the trigger volume right here to the target of the set transform now get a get position chip make sure this is connected up to the framework object then you want to get a vector 3 create and a vector 3 split and now get an add chip now connect up this vector 3 split to the get position right here now connect up the y right here to the top of the add and the sum right here to the y on the vector 3 create now this add chip is going to depend on how high you've made this map from your bottom map so for me just give it a guess i'm just do like 15 for now now connect up this x on the vector 3 create to the x on the vector 3 split same with the z connect it up to the z right here now connect up to the vector 3 right here to the position of the set transform then get a combatant get velocity then connect the from record object right here to the combatant then you connect the velocity to the rotation on the set transform also connect the is valid right here to the set transform 
right now you want to go back to your map and get the ai path point and just want to spawn these in on wherever your ai wants the path to so just spawn these wherever it doesn't really matter where they are just make sure they're on the on the map once you have a couple of them spawned come back to your circuits then get your record object get all with tag chip the spawning components already have the tag of ai path point so just put ai path point make sure it's spelled exactly like this then you should see the count so 14 then get a delay then you get a random from list chip then get an ai set patrol point now connect the spawn on the spawner component to the run the delay make the delay one second connect the after delay to the random from list connect the list right here to the record object all with tag then connect this to the ai set patrol point and the ai right here is connected up all the way up to here to this from record object now I'm just going to come up here and clone this from our object chip down here. Just right here should be good. Now connect up the output of the random from list to the from our object. Then you connect this up to your patrol point. So now if we spawn it in, it should start patrolling around. So actually instead of using this AI set patrol point, just delete that and get a random object variable. And I'm just going to name this just path point. Because we're going to be setting this variable to the path point that the AI is going to be going to. So connect this up to here, then connect this to the framework object. All right, now to make the this rotation right here better, I'm just going to select these two chips right here, and then just clone them down to like about right here. Then just connect this velocity up to the vector 3 split, and this vector 3 create back up to the rotation. And then keep these X connected and the Y, I mean the Z connected, then keep the Y disconnected and keep it zero. And if you want to make the rotation of your monster or whatever be like smooth, because right now it kind of just like snap rotates kind of thing. So there is a way we could make it like turn smoothly. Disconnect this vector three and connect this to the end. Connect the result to the rotation. Then connect the start right here up to the combat and get velocity. Then make the progress right here 0.1. And now just go above a little bit and spawn in a ray cast. Make the start position the trigger volume right here. And it should create a get position right here. That so should look like this. I get a get closest. Then a get all players. Then just clone this get position down about right here. Now connect the get all players to the get closest. Then connect the origin right here to the trigger volume right here. Then connect the get closest to the get position. Actually, instead of this get position, it spawn in a player head position, and then it connects this closest up to the player head position. Now get a subtract, then connect the player head position to the top right here, and the bottom value to the get position on the trigger volume right here. Then connect the difference up to the direction on the raycast. Now again, if it's valid, and put it next to the set transform. Now connect the player on the raycast to the value on the if is valid, then connect the set transform to the if is valid. Now get an AI path to and an AI set pathing speed. Connect it is valid to here and then that to there. Now connect the AIs up to the front record object right here. Same with this one. Connect the AI set pathing speed up to the front record object right here. Now this is your running speed right here. So make this like a pretty high running number. So like seven. Then connect this target on the AI path two up here to the player on the raycast. So now this part is pretty important. Get a bool variable and an if chip. I just named a bool, just bool. Then connect the is not valid up to the if chip and the condition to the bool variable. Then clone this bool variable right here. And then connect the else to the bool and make sure this is set to true. Now connect the output right here, down here to the random from list. Now you're gonna wanna clone that same bool variable and just put it right next to this A at set pathing speed. And then connect this up to the bool variable and make sure this is false. Now you're going to want to clone the AI path to and AI set pathing speed down here where the random from list is and this variable and just connect up this variable to the AI path to and then connect this up to the AI set pathing speed. Now connect up the AI right here up here to this from record object. Same with this on AI set pathing speed, the AI up to the from record object. And this one is just going to be your walking speed, so make this one a little number, so like three. So the spawner component is going to only spawn one if the room authority is executing this right here. So I'm going to show you how to easily fix that so everyone could spawn it in. Just get an event receiver, an event sender, and an event definition. Name the event definition. I'm going to name this one spawn. Make sure you click submit. Now configure your event receiver and make this one to spawn. And make the event sender spawn. Make the target right here, room authority. Then just select all three of these and then clone them down once. And rename this one to be despawn. Click submit. After you rename it, it should also change both of these. So then just connect this up to the reset and this spawn up to the spawn right here. So now if anyone executes this right here, then it'll spawn the AI. 
Same with this. If anyone executes this, it'll reset the AI. Then I go over to him, then he should start following me. Yep, he speeds up and starts following me. So clone this update their hertz down over here. Then get an if chip and an equals. Move this to the side right there. Select the vector three split and the vector three create. And then clone this down to like right here. And I get three rounds like that. Now connect up the X to the first round, connect this up to the X. Now connect the Y to this one and this one to Y. Connect the Z to the round and this Z there. Connect the other hertz to the if chip. Connect the equals to the condition. We also need to clone this up. I'm just going to disconnect this for now because it's going to cause errors. Now connect with this vector 3 up to this get position right here. That's connected to the frame record object. And then connect with the vector 3 to the top of the equals. Now connect up this vector 3 to the bottom of the equals. Then this vector 3, connect this on up to the path point variable right here. Then I should just create a get position right here. Now connect the equals up the condition. It's going to cause errors because the AI hasn't spawned yet. But just so I don't get these loggers, I'm just going to connect this up to here and then make this value connected to the front room object. Then connect it to the is valid to the if chip. So now if you clear the logs, you don't get any loggers. Then just connect this then over to the random from list. Now if we spawn it in, it goes to a random path point. Once he gets there, yep, he goes to a different path point. If I get close to him, he'll start chasing me. And then if I get away from him, he goes back to the path points. But there is one more thing we need to do. Select these two vector three split and vector three creates and just clone it above right here to this set transform. Now get a subtract, get a reroute, connect the Y to the subtract and the difference to the Y right here. Now connect the reroute to the bottom of the subtract. Same with the reroute right here through the bottom of this add chip right here. Now this is just the value that was on the add chips. So the distance between your bottom map and your top map, the mine was 15. Then connect the player on the raycast right here to the ve vector three. So it should have created a get position. Now connect up this vector three up to the target on the AI path two. Now, if we spawn this in, it'll still be the same, but if he is on the bottom area right here, then he's gonna keep on chasing me instead of trying running up the stairs. So to make it a little bit better, we can just clone this delay right here connect this is valid to the cancel then connect the cancel to the af path 2 then connect up this is not valid to the run and connect the after delay to the if chip right here so this delay right here this is going to be how much more seconds the ai is going to be chasing the player after the player has gone out of its line of sight but this could cause a little bit of bugs by executing this too quickly but if you want you could just get rid of it or you could just keep it so we just spawn it in he sees me start chasing after me if i go far away enough he keeps on chasing me for three seconds and then yeah there we go it goes back to pathing i hope this new ai video helped you guys put any questions you have in the comments i'll most likely be responding to them if you want to know how to make the jump scare and how to do animations for your ai then you're going to want to go to my second ai video and a certain timestamp i'll put them in the description so i hope you guys enjoyed i will see you guys in the next video